welcome to Gamer TV. Coming up in today's show, we've got the very first review of an Xbox 360 game. Fall in for Call of Duty 2. We go ape for King Kong. And The Rock takes charge in the Doom movie. All hell breaks loose and it's non-stop. Hello, I'm Sam Delaney and this is Gamer TV Next Gen. First up, get ready to talk a bit like Scrooge McDuck whilst killing some communists. That's right. Bond's back. His name's Bond, James Bond. And over the years, the suave spy has starred in more games than he's had shaken martinis. For many, the best Bond by far was Sean Connery. Now EA have persuaded him to lend his iconic likeness and voice. Oh, money, Benny. Let me tell you the secret of the world. To a console adaptation of the classic 60s film from Russia with Love. Bond is sent to Istanbul on the trail of a defecting Russian spy with a code encryption machine called the Lector. It turns out he's been lured into a trap by an evil crime cartel as revenge for taking out their agent, Dr. No. When do I get to kill the real James Bond? Most of the film's vital plot elements and characters feature here. But lots more gameplay-friendly bits have been added and some action sequences have been altered. Control is kept simple and works well. James locks on to target the relentless stream of henchmen. And when he uses focus, he zooms in to shoot more accurately, picking a grenade off a belt, for example. A super spy isn't much use if they can't sneak about properly, so that's here too along with some special close quarters moves and, of course, Bond has a load of wacky Q-branch gadgets to field test. Hardcore gamers may find this a bit too easy for their taste, but the 60s feel and Connery's unmistakable 007 style have been captured nicely, which should please fans of the film. But, James, I need you. So does England. Just keeping the British end up, sir. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. And other great lines from James Bond films. Let's look at the score. We'll give it three out of five. Yeah, it's an authentic game, but I tell you what, it doesn't have my favorite bit out of the original film. Then again, it's not easy to digitally recreate a sexually charged cat fight between two sexy young gypsies. Believe me, I've tried repeatedly. Who are you? The name is Bond. James Bond. The original first-person shooter, Doom, redefined the way we thought about action games with its combination of gung-ho carnage and gory chills. Doom was really the game that popularized the whole first-person shooter genre. It's no longer, I'm this little guy moving around on the screen. It's now you inside the world, when you pull out the big guns and start going after everything. After spawning a host of imitators and three sequels, Doom is finally bringing its hellish vision of combat to the big screen. Lord of the Rings star Carl Urban and Hollywood beefcake The Rock lock and load as hard as nails Marines. Search and destroy. Target approaching. Yeah. Investigating strange goings on at a Martian research facility. Attack! We're in pursuit, moving fast out of the dig. By investigating, Did we mean shouting see? a lot and shooting everything that moves. Go to hell. You are, for the very first time, the first person shooter. And what an exciting feeling that is to know that you're doing something that's never been done in film. There comes a point in the story where uh, I guess it's the ultimate homage to the game that we as an audience go into first person shooter where the audience becomes me and my POV is, is played out on the screen and, and actually that was one of the elements that really attracted me to this film. Reload. The film delivers what the game delivered, which was some very raw, hard, tough, um, uncompromising scares. Should efforts of containment be endangered, eliminate with extreme prejudice. 
Good hunting, soldier. It's a tactical squad that's been formed, and they're called in. There's a problem on a research facility. The scientists are trying to engineer genetics, and people start getting mutated. And some old friends from the game make an appearance. The BFG in the video game, you wanted to have the BFG in the video game in the movie. This bio-force gun, and this weapon is huge. It's uh, government-issued, government-made, take out the side of a building. It's fantastic, I, and of course my character, Sarge, uh, stumbles upon it, and, and to Sarge, he is in absolute heaven. are pretty simple, contain and calm the situation down, but it rapidly gets completely out of control and they are put to the ultimate test. People are dropping left and right and, you know, he's dying, he's dying, bam, me, you know, oh, I'm hitting, you know, and it's all going on when it's absolute utter chaos. It's about warfare and about being a fantasy, about surviving in situations when you shouldn't survive. There's something coming up behind you. What is that? We gotta go now. It's so visceral, it's so real in this corridor, you know, taking down these targets. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I love it. You enter into this world and you're scared to death. Evacuate, evacuate! All hell breaks loose and it's non-stop. The Doom movie will be blasting its way across cinema screens this December. Hands up, who wants to win a load of gaming-related free stuff? What are you doing? I can't see your hands. We're divided by televisual technology. Now who looks stupid? The truth is, we all do. But you won't if you stay tuned to win some exotic prizes later in the show. Next up, games industry beware. The spam filter is on the prowl. Fans of Japanese Weird Fest Killer 7 will be able to follow the continuing adventures of everybody's favourite schizophrenic assassin in a new comic. Publishing house Devil's Due have penned a deal to bring the Killer 7 characters to comic stores. The comic's author has stated there will be a kind of mutant crossbreeding of John Woo and Quentin Tarantino. Mmm, sounds nice. The company behind the Mega Smash Grand Theft Auto series is going all highbrow. 2K Games have just purchased the rights to produce a video game tie-in for the forthcoming movie, The Da Vinci Code. The movie, based on author Dan Brown's best-selling conspiracy novel, is certainly a departure from the gun-toting antics of the GTA crowd. The Da Vinci Code is the best-selling novel of all time, and it's a safe bet that 2K are hoping to imitate that success with the game. Legendary Nintendo games designer Shigeru Miyamoto has spoken out recently about the state of the games industry. He says, most people think video games are all about a child staring at a TV with a joystick in his hand. I don't. They should belong to the entire family. I want families to play video games together. Oh, isn't that nice? Are you all right, Jack? You don't look so good. If your average Hollywood star is considered difficult, then imagine Peter Jackson's plight at having to make a movie with this chap. And, of course, this fella. <laughs> Nevertheless, the King Kong movie is almost upon us, and as inevitable as death and taxes, Ubisoft have got the video game version primed and ready. It closely follows the plot of the movie. New York lovely Anne Darrow is convinced to star in a film by wacky and possibly insane director Carl Denham. Excuse me, Mr. Denham. Shouldn't we concentrate on finding Preston and the others? Finding Preston? Oh, great idea. He must have at least three cans of film with him. Normally, strange men asking young women to star in movies is dodgy enough. If they involve giant crustaceans, however, it's surely a matter for the police. Essentially, the game is a first-person shooter, placing you in the Depression-era shoes of Adrian Brody's character, Jack Driscoll. 
Naturally, no Kong game would be complete without a few sequences playing the big guy himself. Kong is going to be totally hard, obviously, and judging by his adversaries, it's a good job too. We'll be serving up our detailed review next week, but for now, everything's looking pretty fine in the world of Kong. Period styling, monsters, guns, and glamorous blondes may sound like a good holiday to you, but take our advice and stick with the video game version. The place is called Skull Island now, but only a little while ago it was called Overly Curious but Otherwise Perfectly Happy Sailor Island. You can fill in the rest yourself. <laughs> I tell you what, if part one left you giddy, part two's likely to make you fall out of your chair and lapse into some kind of blissful coma. Take a look. Still to come, check out our exclusive review of Call of Duty 2 for the Xbox 360. Make friends with alien cyborgs in Quake 4. And a Swiss Army knife just won't cut it in Soul Calibur 3. That's all after the break. I have no need for weak souls. Big Ron's back. The Ivory Coast v Italy, tonight at 7.30, live on Bravo. Play.com this Christmas, save up to 40% on fantastic blockbuster DVDs. Titles include Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Still alive, baby? Batman Begins, Are you ready to begin? The Polar Express, There is the North Pole, Fantastic Four, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Bring in the chocolate. For blockbuster movies and great savings, visit Play.com. Free delivery on everything. Man, play as Kong. Play Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. If you're worried about money, it can sometimes feel as if life's passing you by. Maybe the repayments on your credit cards and loans are leaving you with less and less money each month. But it doesn't need to be that way. You could free up more money each month by consolidating your existing debts into one sensible, secured loan from First Plus. With First Plus, homeowners like you can borrow anything from £5,000 to £100,000 at low rates like these. So make the most of your life. Call First Plus now on 0800 183 2000 or visit firstplus.co.uk. Hello, Direct Line. How can I help? I'm buying a bigger house, so I need a bigger mortgage. One that I know I can afford, one with a fixed rate. Right. Let's get this lady sorted. Okay, we've got the low rate. And there's no surprises. Our monthly repayments are totally fixed. And she can overpay up to 10% of what she's borrowed each year without penalty, slashing her interest payments. And whether she's moving home or moving mortgage, we'll cut down on the paperwork by filling in as much as we can over the phone. That's great. Call 0800 092 9696 or go online to see exactly what we could do for you. That's 0800 092 9696. Good thinking from Direct Line. Egg has invented egg money, a credit card so revolutionary, we tested it on guinea pigs. The results were interesting. The guinea pigs who chose to shop got cash back on their purchases. And the ones who didn't earned interest on the money they kept on it. Egg money, tested and approved by guinea pigs. If you're stuck with an old, unreliable car because you can't get credit, don't worry, because at Yes Car Credit, you could get a better car. And a service that's second to none. 
Just give us a call and even if you've been refused elsewhere, we could approve you over the phone right away. Then just go along to your nearest showroom where a friendly advisor will agree a payment with you and help you choose from a wide range of makes and models to suit your budget. There's even a choice of cars from just 12 months old. We offer competitive interest rates and you could use your old car as full deposit. All our cars are 125 point quality checked and come with 12 months AA vehicle membership as standard so you can buy with complete confidence. We'll even give you seven days to exchange the car if you change your mind. You can drive away the very same day and with YesCare, our special after sales package, our service just keeps on going. So call us now on 0800 085 5150, click on yescarcredit.net or see us in the yellow pages and discover why Britain's saying yes to Yes Car Credit. Hello and welcome back to Gamer TV Next Gen. Now, we all like a straightforward beat-em-up, don't we? But sometimes they're just missing something. That's right, massive swords and battle hammers. Well, don't worry, because I think I can hear a delivery of those just arriving. It'll be over quickly. Get ready. Don't let your guard down, or you'll die. With Tekken covering the fists and feet end of the spectrum, fighting heavyweights Namco have always relied on one of their other beat-em-ups to bring tools to the rumble. Now those blades are clashing again in Soul Calibur 3 for the PS2. Time to die! Fight! Three new warriors have entered the arena to join all the old favourites for this bout of hack and slash mayhem. There's the sinister Zalasamel with his death side. Setsuka, a lightning fast lady who cunningly conceals her sword in a parasol. And then there's the somewhat unhinged Kira. She wields the world's deadliest hula hoop. What's more, this time you can custom build your own characters from scratch, choosing their gender, occupation, attire and weapons. Visuals are as top-notch as we've come to expect from this series, with breathtaking environments and a fireworks display of sparkling effects going off all over the place. In story mode, a new feature is the evasive action required during the animated sequence before each fight. Don't sit and watch, you'll be needed. I have no need for weak souls. Then we have the Chronicles of the Sword mode, which is a bit odd. This involves real-time strategy-style map negotiation. Then every so often you'll encounter an enemy stronghold where things really kick off. Fight! So it's back to the normal business of sharp object-based 3D combat. Soul Calibur 3 there, but is it as smooth as Marvin Gaye or as lame and regrettable as Colour Me Bad? Let's find out, shall we? We'll give it four out of five. Soul Calibur 3, still top for Blades, and for me, knife play hasn't been so much fun since 5th 21st Scout Group in 1987. Man, those kids were bloodthirsty. Fear me, for I am a demon. Well, here we go, our first Xbox 360 review, and I think we're on fairly safe ground, which is more than to be said for this guy. Call of Duty has evolved into one of the most respected first-person shooter franchises, not to mention the loudest, most intense, the bloodiest, and the one most likely to make you throw up your hands in horror at the sins of man and then go and hide behind the dog. Call of Duty 2 on Xbox 360 is everything you loved about the original amplified to the very limit of endurance. Battles are bone crushing with flying debris and shaking ground. Graphics are simply stupendous, and heck, even the sound effects are blood curdling. Let's start with the graphics. There are astonishing levels of detail on display here. Smoke billows, grenades spit clods of earth at you, and every line of despair is evident on the faces of your comrades in arms. 
light in places part two, and each of the huge maps has its own distinct flavor, but the same recurring theme, Zest. The traditional Call of Duty set pieces are present, of course, and the bar is set very, very high early on, with the Pont de Hoc landings on D-Day proving electric, to say the least. Another of our favorites was this cramped and terrifying journey through a metal pipeline. It's rare that a video game actually sands you, but the relentless violence of the missions is definitely a shock. You might even feel reluctant to pull the trigger yourself, but that's not a course of action we'd recommend. Changes in gameplay include the complete absence of health packs. Our tip for staying alive, don't get shot. So, Xbox 360 is off to a flying start. Call of Duty 2 sells effortlessly over existing console versions and is on a par with any wartime shooter on the PC. While not a total relaunch of the series, the past few years of design experience and the power of Microsoft's new console are a perfect match. We'll give it four out of five. At a cost of 50 million deaths, the war in Europe is finally over. OK, now it's time for this week's competition. Microsoft have given us an Xbox 360 to give away. To win it, simply answer this question. What year was Microsoft founded? Was it A, 1970, B, 1975, or C, 1980. To enter, phone our competition hotline on 09014 900 320. Calls cost 50 pence. You must be over 18 to enter. For full terms and conditions, go to www.bravo.co.uk. Lines will close midnight, 22nd of November. Games come and games go. Popular game series like Tekken and Metal Gear Solid have become household names. But there's a ton of critically acclaimed titles out there that have been shunned by the paying public. So here is Gamer TV's guide to the top five overlooked games. At five, iconic possibly, Ico most definitely. Ico is a cult classic. It's a sort of third person action adventure stroke puzzle game. What everyone likes about it is the atmosphere and the incredibly rich storyline. Essentially, you play this, this young boy who has to guide a mysterious, sort of ghostly princess out of this huge labyrinthine castle. It's a real shame that people haven't really, uh, you know, had the opportunity to play it. And I think it's principally because it doesn't have guns or explosions or, or football in it. Everyone should play IK because it has best music, atmosphere, emotion. It's all there. It's brilliant. A fantastic action adventure then, but never destined to be as popular as Zelda. At four, why did the chicken cross the road? Because it was an Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is one of those funny games where it's, it's almost not really a game at all. It's like The Sims in a lot of ways, where you set up your character, you move into a town, you get a little house, and then the rest of the game is essentially you finding things. Animal Crossing is classic Nintendo, really. It's just cute and wonderful. I know that a lot of people have become seriously obsessed with Animal Crossing. It's, it's strange. There's no objectives, really. You can post letters and you can buy chairs and generally live in the life of a little square animal. It's surprisingly interesting. At three, was this beyond the reach of the gaming public or was it just beyond good and evil? I remember one of the guys I worked with reviewing it, telling everyone how great this game was. Um, and then I remember it essentially sinking without a trace. <laughs> Beyond Good and Evil, I, I never really played it that much, I have to admit. It may have slipped past the expert eye of some, but not us at Gamer. OK. At two, is it a bird, is it a plane? Come to think of it, is it a game? Rez. It was actually quite difficult to play, but the more you got into it, the, the more visually surreal it got. Rez is mental. 
music, strange shoot 'em up fusion. I said everyone should actually play the game. And this is the kind of game that you can lose yourself in for hours. It's almost narcotic uh, in, its, uh, in the way it controls your mind and you really get into the game. Yes, it's bizarre, but it's also one of the most addictive games around. And at number one, should this be the king of games, Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time? I would say Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, quite possibly the best game remake ever. Brilliant action adventure. It had the whole 2D games to build upon. I mean, now you see adventure games, you've got wall running and rewinds in every single one of them. That was the first one, and it does it better than any of the others anyway. It's a fantastic kind of 3D environment that you could um, hop, skip and jump around. And the Prince is a very acrobatic character, very light and nimble on his feet. He can run up walls and do somersaults and you know, really traverse this 3D space. Sands of Time is visually stunning and an incredible game to play. Definitely a prince amongst thieves. Well, like a skydiver whose parachute has just failed, the show is about to reach its horrific end. But before we go, we're going to feed you a rich slice of the future of video gaming. Wait a second. I've got to read it. Brave PC gamers have already been battling it out across Quake 4's futuristic war zones, but now a console is getting its own taste of alien brutality. This is another review of a next generation Xbox 360 title, which now makes it current generation technically, but that aside, it's already proven that it can hold its own with tricked out PC gaming rigs. Quake 4 on Microsoft's new machine is a clear example. The 360 takes id Software's demandingly powerful Doom 3 engine in its stride. Some ride, eh, buddy? Who's the new guy? Matthew Kane. Following on from the end of Quake 2, you're a Marine called Matthew Kane. In an attempt to stop the Strog onslaught from destroying us all, Earth's forces are staging a massive assault on their home world. His elite Rhino squad are shot down on their approach and crash land on the surface. As if that's not a severe enough situation already, Kane is captured and surgically transformed into one of the enemy. Her be a space marine sometimes, eh? These events play out a lot like a sci-fi take on the D-Day invasion. And throughout the game, you get the feeling that you're part of a massive conflict with all the military hardware that goes with it. The all-important multiplayer modes are like playing those in Quake 3 with the visual meat of the Doom 3 engine behind them. We'll give it four out of five. There's a while to wait before Halo 3 arrives, but this will more than satisfy itchy sci-fi trigger fingers until then. <laughs> well, time's nearly up, but I know what you're thinking. You want to see more of that, don't you? OK. Have a second little peek, but remember to join us next time on Gamer TV Next Gen.